Like the company's national partner NASA, SpaceX has been viewed as an American company for ages. Considering that SpaceX's South African founder and CEO Elon Musk has lived in the United States since 1992, and SpaceX has been California-based since 2002, it's not too surprising to see why. The company has won billions in NASA-funded contracts and keeps its presence well-known throughout California and Texas, with its significant headquarters, launch sites, operations, and virtually everything else in the United States. However, it seems like SpaceX is now starting to expand internationally. The company has already gained permission to launch its Starlink satellite service in Australia, Canada, and multiple European countries. And on top of that, SpaceX seems to want more. Well, specifically, more of its competitors' lunches. Part of the reason that SpaceX hasn't already expanded so wide internationally is thanks to the fact that many countries have their own space programs and private space companies and therefore these countries would rather put their billions of dollars worth of investments towards their own national space companies if possible. In fact, there's even an Ars Technica article titled Europe is starting to freak out about the launch dominance of SpaceX. It doesn't get much more specific than that. And countries seem to have taken that to heart. As a result, hundreds of thousands, if not millions in contracts have gone towards smaller upstarts and more extensive international companies as well all towards cutting back the ever-growing presence of SpaceX within the commercial space market, or until now. In a bit of a surprise, SpaceX managed to grab a contract from another country. It was even European. Wow, right? It was a contract snatched right from Italy. Actually, it was a contract from Ariane Space, a French company, but the contract was paid for by the Italian Space Agency, or ASI for short. And yeah, that was surprising, especially considering the political aspects of giving SpaceX a contract. The thing is, the millions and billions pouring into major companies like Ariane Space haven't brought them up to pace with SpaceX. So, oddly enough, these companies are actually old, or, well, in comparison to the teenage SpaceX. Ariane Space was founded in 1980. As a quick example, over the last 40 years, they've pumped out a whopping 850 satellites. That's incredibly impressive, until you compare it to the 1,700 active Starlink satellites, all launched within the last three and a half years. Of course, that's just one example that doesn't show the entire problem. It's still a notable piece of information, though. It also shows one of the problems for international companies. Even the most sophisticated and well-established companies out there can't compete with SpaceX, a 19-year-old company. And so, let's get back to this Italian contract. According to the ASI, SpaceX was chosen since it was not possible to have a European backup solution, and thus, an alternative solution with the US provider SpaceX has been adopted. Interestingly, the agency gets kind of passive-aggressive near the end, saying that other future launch opportunities for ASI missions are under discussion, confirming Ariane Space as a key partner for the agency. So it really seems like SpaceX was as much of a second choice as possible, with the contract only given out of pure necessity. Still, that's not entirely a bad thing. While it might not be seen quite yet by these countries, they need SpaceX, and ironically precisely as a second choice. As the ASI initially chose Ariane Space and the company couldn't fulfill their satellite launch, it's just showing how hard it is to nail things like SpaceX can. While it might not seem like a great thing to resort to a company as a quick replacement, it's a sign that things aren't as ironclad as other countries push them to be. Remember, Europe hasn't stretched towards using SpaceX because they don't want to depend on the company. As SpaceX grows in dominance, they'll have increased pricing power and can take advantage of more as they go. Having Italy use the company's Falcon 9 rocket is proof that SpaceX is breaking through the barrier to international success. If we go back to Starlink as an example, things are even more apparent. Since its limited U.S. trials in August 2020, SpaceX has pushed Starlink to a total of 18 countries, with three more planned. However, with big names such as Canada and the U.K. in January 2021, Germany in March, Australia in April, five more European countries across the next few months, and even Italy in September, you can see cracks start to appear. After all, Starlink needs regulatory approval from these countries' governments to operate Starlink in their nation. And with European countries making up 13 of the currently 21 launched or planned betas, they're obviously not as against the company as one might think. Even acting as a substitute for one of its competitors, 
Musk's company shows its superiority, higher success rate, and reliability. As such, Ariane launches were canceled thanks to two failures, and what's to stop that from continuing? Although competitors are multiplying, whether in terms of private or public ones, they're still behind SpaceX. Plus, the company's just cheaper. Compared to the United States' more than $40 billion in space program investments, no country even comes close. With the top nations ranging between $5.8 billion and just $202 million, few countries even have enough money to spend on space programs. And that's an important thing, especially as those countries with funding continue to take dominance in space. Let's go back to Ariane Space. Their Ariane 5 rocket was meant to bring the ASI's satellite into orbit before the contract was cancelled. For Italy, that might have been a good thing. According to Flight Global, an Ariane 5 flight costs a whopping $165 to $220 million to get off the ground. As for the Falcon 9, $62 million or under. The ASI, while not small by any means, had a 2020 budget of $2.1 billion. That's under 10 launches, ignoring any R&D, operations control, or virtually anything else. That makes even the still expensive Falcon 9 look like a budget option. If you look at the future Starship, things become even more advantageous for these countries, especially considering that one Ariane 5 flight literally costs more than Switzerland's 2019 budget of $202 million. Out of the near 200 independent nations, roughly 180 can't afford a single Ariane 5 launch. That's 90% of all countries across the entire world. And for any country that wants to be part of the I went to space in the 21st century club, that's unacceptable. And that's where SpaceX steps in. With a hopeful eventual price of just $2 million per Starship launch, generally in fuel, repairs, and operations, SpaceX proves itself to be a good partner for any future launches. Even today, the $62 million price tag for SpaceX's Falcon 9 is way cheaper than any comparable option. Also, that's the same price for the last five years and what the company sells the space publicly for. So who knows how cheap it may be now or when provided to a country willing to negotiate. Overall, SpaceX has had the opportunity to do so much for not only Italy's space program, not only the European Space Agency or the Eastern Hemisphere, but the entire world. SpaceX doesn't have to be limited to just the United States. And sure, that might push the company to be a monopoly, but it's also a company with the best technology out there. Lower prices, excellent reliability, larger prospects, an exciting resume, dozens of projects in the pipeline, an entire satellite system currently unrivaled in potential, and so much more. But for now, that's just for the United States. If any of these companies want larger pieces of the pie, they'll have to actively break away from their past promises. Sure, SpaceX could show up to save the day and be seen as a I told you so moment by others. However, it's also one of the greatest chances to get into space in ways that don't risk nations or their statuses in the process. Whether it be a lack of funds or just a general lack of interest, the vast majority of countries haven't been able to establish any foothold in space yet. While their reasonings are not always obvious, we do know that SpaceX is slowly wearing down the international space community. And there's an ever-growing need for the company in more than just one place. More countries will continue to drift further into expensive, experimental, potentially dangerous projects if this pace keeps going. SpaceX is right there and has the present and future technologies to make space travel way more accessible than it needs to be. And so, what do you all think? Is SpaceX's Italian Space Agency contract the start of an international push towards SpaceX, or was it just a lucky coincidence? Do you think the agency will eventually return to Ariane 5 launches, or will they realize they can accomplish much more with SpaceX? With more in the pipeline, such as Starlink, will SpaceX continue to expand past the United States? After all, they already have nearly two dozen countries' regulatory approval to operate Starlink within their borders. Either way, let us know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to check out some of our recent videos if you're up to it. Anyway, thanks for checking in and we'll see you all next time.